Hello again. Well, it's a bit more light today, so I'm really pleased with the office because you can see my blue eyes in this kind of light. Otherwise, it's a yellow light and I don't like it. So today, you see the real David in, in natural light. I'm holding up for you a video, which I don't have many videos, but this one I really enjoyed. It's called 12 Years a Slave. And it's um, it was very, very good because in it, there was a certain, it was all about slavery in America. And in it, there was a slave market and it was really well done. And there were men and women there on sale for slavery. And this man got kidnapped and taken to this slave market and so on. And um, there were good people there in that slave market. Instead of buying the slave for uh, making him work or her work, uh, that sort of purpose for slavery work, they bought them to set them free. And that's a perfect, they, they ransomed them. They paid a ransom. They paid for their freedom and got them out of the slave market. And when you see something visually like that, it sticks with you. This is why I really like this um, this film, uh, 12 Years a Slave. Now, I wanted to read to you from um, the Passion Translation, as I usually do. And uh, this is what I found, that this phrase sort of leapt at me and it's from Romans 6. Now, I know Romans 6, and uh, it's, it's about dying to self and dying to sin and being alive to God. And our involvement and uh, co-crucifixion, the Passion says, when Christ died, we died. Now, you know, you might find that a bit of a concept, but my granddad was in the war in 1915, in the First World War, and my mother was born in 1921. Now, if my granddad had died in the war in 1915 and he escaped, I'm not going to go into the details because of, of time, but he escaped. He was nearly killed in that war. But if he'd have been killed, I wouldn't be here talking to you because I would have died when he died. So that's the concept. When Christ died, I died. And so I was co-crucified with Christ. Now, because of that, I am now no longer under the master, the slave master of sin. No longer. I've been freed from that master. And this chapter, chapter six in Romans, is talking about being under a different master. And my title of my blog today is that grace gives them the free gives us the freedom to choose the freedom to choose i can either choose to stay with my old master which was sin or i can choose my new master who is jesus i see people smoking you know and, and i say to them you're a slave and they mostly get offended but i mean i'm used to that i just tell people the truth whether it suits or not and say, yeah, you can't give up, you need cigarettes, or you need to inject, or you need this, you need that, or you're a slave to worry. Uh, addictions, that is slavery. And we were, before we came to Christ, we were slaves to sin. We had to sin. If there was sin in our bloodline, it came down from grandparents to dad and mum and through to us. We were slaves to sin. But Jesus came into that slave market and he paid the ransom. He ransomed us with his blood. I'm not going to turn to all the references because, you know, it would take too much time and I'm turning pages and so on. You can find this for yourself. Jesus ransomed us. He paid the ransom price with his blood. So we were freed from that master. The master of slavery was called sin. And we're now free to serve God because of grace, because of his unmerited love. Let me read you a bit. What are we to do then? This is Romans 6 and verse 15. What are we to do then? Should we sin to our heart's content since there's no law to condemn us anymore? What a terrible thought. 
don't you realise that grace frees us to choose your own master? Wow, that hit me. Grace frees us to choose our own master. But choose carefully. For you, if, you, if you surrender yourself to become a servant, bound to the one you choose to obey. Choose carefully, for you surrender yourself to become a servant. So when you, when you choose, you're actually surrendering yourself to become a servant, bound to the one you choose to obey. So if I choose to obey sin, I become a servant or a slave of sin. If you choose to love sin, it will become your master and it will own you and reward you with death. But if you choose Jesus as your master and obey God, he will lead you into perfect righteousness. Thanks be to God. This is verse 17, Romans 6, 17. Thanks be to God for in the past you were slaves of sin or servants of sin, but now your obedience is heart deep and you are now able to celebrate your freedom from your former master. You've left its bondage and now you are God's perfect servant, loving servant. We've been, we've been given grace. The gospel of grace is the fact I'm free to choose. Unless you hear this gospel, you're not free to choose. You will stay a slave of sin all your living, breathing life. There's no way out. But when you hear that God loves you unconditionally, he paid the ransom, paid with his blood. It means that you now can choose your master. Hmm? Choose your master. Choose Jesus as your master, because he's a good master. And he pays well. He pays us with health and wealth and joy and peace and all the other good things. If you decide to stay or to serve sin, it becomes your master and you go back where you are and you don't want that. Okay, now this message may not have been developed too smoothly today because I've no notes. I'm just telling you heart to heart. I hope you've received it heart to heart. Choose a good master. Choose Jesus. Don't go back to the old master. You don't have to. He's hold of you has been broken. Amen. Thanks for listening. Bye-bye.